Okay, I'm going to show you how to find um, where angles are located in both radians and degrees um, and then to be able to find what their reference angles. So the first thing that you need to know is where a few key points are uh, or angles are in degrees. So we start, we always start off to the right hand side at zero. This is 90 degrees, this is 180 degrees, this is 270 degrees, and this is 360. So each quadrant is going up by 90 degrees. Um, and then you can keep going around and around and around and around. Um, and the way that we draw our angles is starting from zero and we go counterclockwise if they're positive and we go clockwise if they are negative. So for example, if I wanted to draw where um, 200 degrees would be. Okay? So I would first start here at zero I would go past 90, past the 180, into the third quadrant. Remember that we label our quadrants as 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we use our Roman numerals um, to state which quadrant it's in. So this um, terminal side, so this is the terminal side, it's the ending side of the angle, would be located in quadrant three. So if I asked you what um, to state the quadrant in which the terminal side of each angle lies, then um, I would draw this picture and I would say that it uh, lies in quadrant three. Okay. Now, if I have one um, like <coughs> negative 500, oh, that was not what I was trying to write negative 517 degrees, okay. I first want to know how far past 360 this is. So what I can do is just do 517 minus 360, which gives us 157. So because of the negative, rather than going counterclockwise, I'm gonna go clockwise. So I'm gonna go around one full time to 360, and then I'm gonna go 157 past 360. So this would be another negative 90. And then negative 180 would put us here, so negative 157 is somewhere in there, which would again put us into the third quadrant. Okay. Now, what if I had something like um, 290 degrees? Okay. So I'm going to start at zero, I go past 90, past 180, remember this is 270, so I'm going to go past 270 and that will put us into quadrant four. Okay. If I have something like 102 degrees, um, if we look at 102 degrees, 102 degrees is past the 90 but before the 180. So I'm going to start at zero, I'm going to go counterclockwise and right about there is going to be 102. We're not being super precise, I just am making sure what I know which quadrant it's located in. So this would be quadrant two. Okay. Now if I have something like negative um, 705, again we're going to want to see how fast, how far past 360. So I'm going to do 705 minus 360. Now notice I didn't put the negative in the calculator, I'm just seeing how far past 360 it is. So it's 345 degrees past 360. So since it's negative I'm going to go counterclockwise to 360 and then I'm going to go around to 345. So here's 90, 180, 270, this is 360 so 345 is going to be about there. So I'll be in quadrant one. Okay. Now, that's with degrees. We also have another um, measurement system that we call radians. So the specific um, ones in radians that you want to remember, this is zero, halfway around is pi, which makes this pi halves, and this three pi halves, which is also one and a half pi, and this is two pi. So what I want to do is I want to look and see um, since this is in terms of pi, um, and this is one pi, am I before one pi, am I after one pi, am I close to two pi, um, or am I less than pi halves? So you're kind of looking in terms of halves. So your pi's are, um, or your radians are usually given to you in a fractional format. So if I give you um, 
2 pi thirds. So if we look at 2 thirds, we know that 2 thirds is more than a half, but that 2 thirds is less than 1. So I'm going to go more than a half pi, but less than 1 pi, and that we'll put it here. If we're looking at this as one whole pi portion, right, this is one whole pi, I'm going to split this into two thirds, into three, into thirds, and then I'm going to take two of them. So I'm going to take this part and this part, which will give us two pi thirds, okay? Um, now, um, if it's past one, so for example, if we have, um, 19 pi eighteenths. Okay, well, 18 goes into 19 once, and I have one left over. So this is 1 and 1 18th pi, or this is more typically written as uh, the 19 pi eighteenths. Okay, so please keep this in mind that we're going to use improper fractions when we write radians. So, but this is what I think when I go to draw it. So since it's positive, I'm going to go counterclockwise like we did with degrees. This is 1 pi, so I'm going to go to 1 pi, and then I'm going to go a little bit past that. So that puts this into quadrant 3. Okay. Now, um, what if we have a negative angle? So what if I give you negative 55 pi 18 Okay. Well, what we first want to see is how many times does 18 go into 55? So I'm going to do 55 divided by 18. Now, notice if you're using your calculator um, that this goes in 3.055, so I can know just from the fraction um, where I should be. Also notice I did not put the pi in the calculator. I'm just looking at where the fraction is. Remember how we talked in terms of pi, how this is 1 pi, and this is 2 pi. So I just want to know what the 55 eighteenths is in terms of pi. So it's 3.056 pi. So what I'm going to do, since it's negative, I'm going to go clockwise just like we did with degrees. So I'm going to go to 1 pi, to 2 pi, um, and then Oh, if we go back and we look at our fraction, so 55, uh, or sorry, 18 goes into 55 three times. So if we do 18 times um, 3, we get 54. So I have 1 18th left over. So I have 3 and 1 18th pi. So I'm going to go to negative 1 pi. This makes it negative 2 pi. This would be negative 3 pi, and then just a little bit more. So that would be in quadrant two. Now, um, what if I give you something like seven pi halves? So we start off and we think, how many times does two go into seven? Well, it goes in three times and I have one left over. So I get three and one half pi. This one's positive, so I'm gonna start at zero. This is pi, so I'm gonna go to one pi. This is two pi. This is 3 pi, and then I'm going to go half. Remember, um, your halves are straight up and straight down, so it's going to end right here on the axes. So your 7 pi halves is located there. What if I have 7 pi thirds? So 3 goes into 7 twice, and I have 1 left over, so I have 2 and 1 third pi. So um, when I go to draw this one, remember halfway around is pi, the full way around is 2 pi. So I have 2 pi and then a third, which puts me into the first quadrant. If I have something like 5 pi fourths, I have 1 and 1 fourth pi. Remember halfway around is pi, so I'm going to go to pi and then I'm going to go a fourth of this distance that's left over. So it'd be right here. Um, the other way that you can think of it is a fourth is less than half. So since this is one and a half pi, which we normally just write as three pi halves, um, I know that one and one fourth is less than one and a half. So it has to be in between pi and pi half, three pi halves. Okay. What if I give you um, negative 11 pi 
um, 6. So since it's negative, rather than going counterclockwise, we're going to go clockwise. Okay. So um, 6 goes into 11 once, and I have 5 6 left over. So if you look, this is also really close to 2 pi. It's just shy of 2 pi by a sixth. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go counterclockwise since it's negative. So this is negative pi. It's past, notice 5 sixths is more than half. Um, so I'm going to go more than one and a half, right? But it's going to be less than the full amount. So right about there. And I'm in quadrant one. Okay. Now, we have something that we refer to as reference angles. Your reference angles are how far away the angle is from the x-axis. So if I'm in the first quadrant, um, the reference angle is just whatever the angle is. However, if I'm in the second quadrant and I have this angle, my reference angle is going to be 180 minus my angle if we're in degrees, or pi minus the angle if we're in radians. And then if we go into the third quadrant, the terminal side to the x-axis is the reference angle. So it's going to be the angle minus 180 or uh, the angle minus pi, depending on which one you're in. Then in the fourth quadrant, since we have this angle, the reference angle is going to be up to the x-axis again. So it's going to be 360 minus the angle or 2 pi minus the angle. So um, the way that we can find that is using that. So the first thing I like to do when finding the reference angle is to draw the angle. And then always make sure that you're going to the x-axis for your um, reference angle. So for example, if I have 110 degrees, okay. First, I'm going to draw it. Well, this is past 90, but it's before 180, so it's here. But remember that your reference angle is how far to the x-axis. So I want this angle right here. Well, if this is 110 degrees and this is 180, we're just going to do 180 minus 110. And our reference angle is going to be 70 degrees. Okay. Um, let's try another one. If I have, um, let's look at one if we have one past 360 degrees. So if I have 660 degrees, okay, so I'm first going to see how far past 660 is from 360. So I'm going to do 660 minus 360, which just gives us 300. So I'm going to go around one full time to 360, and then I'm going to go 300 more. So 90, 180, 270, and then this is 360, so I'm going to go about there, okay. So I want to know how far past, or how much more to get to um, the x-axis, okay? Now there's two ways that you could do this. We know that we ended at 300 here our second time around, and we know that this is 360. So I can do 360 minus 300, and I can just get 60 degrees. The other way that we can do it is, well, if we take 360 and we go around twice, that gives us 720. So what I can do is do 720, minus 660, which also gives us 60 degrees. So there's two kinds of thinking that go with it. Um, both of, of them are fine. Let's try another scenario for reference angles. Um, if I give you negative 640 degrees, okay? So I'm gonna draw this. I'm once again gonna see how far past 360, 640 is. So I'm gonna do 640 minus 360. Notice in the calculator, I left off the negative. I'm just seeing where I need to draw it first. And then the negative is telling me that I'm going clockwise instead of counterclockwise. So I'm gonna go around one full time, and then I'm gonna go 280 degrees more. So 90, 180, 270, and then I'm gonna go 10 more degrees, so about there, okay? But remember that your reference angle goes from the end or the terminal side of the angle to the x-axis. So I just want this angle measurement right here. So we know this is 280 and we want to get to 360. Now technically this is negative 280 and negative 360. So if I do negative 360 minus a minus 280 
that will turn into plus 280. Then I'll end up with um, negative 80 degrees. Your reference angle is always positive. So even if you end up with a negative like this, then you would turn it into a positive 80 degrees for your reference angle. Okay. You could also do 720 minus 640 to get to your 80 degrees, both of which are acceptable. Okay. Now, um, if we have angles in radians, um, we do it in a similar manner, um, except for I actually like um, reference angles in radians better than I do in degrees. So if we take a look at 25 pi nines, well, first of all, I want to know how many times does 9 go into 25. So 9 goes into 25 um, two times, so I get 2, and then um, we have how many left over is what we want to think. So 2 times 9 gets us to 18, so I have 7 left over. So I have 2 and 7 ninths pi. So I'm first going to draw this. Okay. So we've gone around past pi, past 1 and a half pi, past 2 pi. 7 ninths is more than half, so I'm just going to put it here. Remember, your reference angle is to the x-axis from the terminal side, so this is my reference angle. Now, we know that this is 3 pi, and this is our 2 and 7 ninths pi. So we can do 3 pi minus 2 and 7 ninths pi, and come up with our answer. <clears throat> um, however, I like to think how many more would it, how many more uh, pi ninths would it take to get to three pi? Well, if I want this number to be three, I need two more on top so that I'll get a whole nine ninths, which will turn to three. So then my reference angle is just going to be two pi ninths. Um, which, when you do this subtraction problem of 3 pi minus 2 and uh, 7 ninths pi, you'll end up with 2 pi ninths. Okay. So let's take a look at another radian one. So if we do uh, 15 pi fourths. So 4 goes into 15 three times, and I have how many left over? Well, the 4 times the 3 gives you 12, so I have 3 more. So I have 3 and 3 fourths pi. Okay, so I'm going to draw again. Um, it's positive, so I'm going to go, this is 1 pi, this is 2 pi, this is 3 pi, and 3 fourths is more than half, so it's going to put it into this fourth quadrant. But remember, your reference angle goes to the x-axis. So we can be thinking, well, this is 4 pi, and this is 3 and 3 fourths pi, so I would do 4 pi minus 3 and 3 fourths pi. Or I can say, how many more to get to 4. So then I would have 1 pi fourths more, so my answer for my reference angle would be pi fourths. Okay. Um, what if I have something like um, 5 pi sixths? Okay, so this time 6 doesn't go into 5, right? So I'm less than 1. But the question is, am I more than half? I am more than half because 5, or half of 6 is 3, so and 5 is more than that. So I'm going to go more than half, okay, but less than 1. And my question is, how far to the x-axis? So how many more would I need to get to pi? Well, we can just think pi minus 5 pi sixths, but I need to get to one whole pi, or how many more to get to one whole pi, I need one more sixth to get me to the pi. So my reference angle would be one sixth pi, which we typically just end up writing as pi sixths. Okay. What if I give you um, 13 pi ninths? So if we look at 13 pi ninths, 9 goes into 13 once, um, I have 4 left over, so I have 1 and 4 pi ninths, or 4 ninths pi. Okay. So what I'm going to do is draw it first. So I, I've gone past pi halves, past pi, but this I need to determine is this more than half or less than half? Well, half of 9 is 4 and a half, so it's going to be just shy of 1 and a half pi. Okay. So right there. 
Well, the question is, how far to the x-axis? So on this one, we're going backwards. So rather than saying how much to the next number, I want to say how far away from 1 was it? Well, can you see we went 1 and 4 pi ninths? So my reference angle is just 4 pi ninths. Let's try one more. Let's do 7 pi sixths. So 6 goes into 7 once. I have 1 left over, so I get 1 and 1 sixth pi. So I'm going to go past pi halves, um, once, uh, past pi, sorry, and then I'm going to go 1 sixth more. So I'm going to put it here, but remember your reference angle is how far past 1 we went. So this is 1 pi, and we're now at 1 and 1 sixth pi. So I went a sixth pi past um, the pi. So then my reference angle is just going to be pi sixths. So hopefully that helps you see how to find um, what quadrant angles are located in both radians and degrees and then how to determine what a reference angle is in both radians and degrees, and then how to draw your angles.